Test ID 11, component ID 80. This is for the upstream O2 sensor with a half cycle counts. Now 80 indicates we have a minimum spec and this app applies to left oxygen sensors when dual oxygen sensors are used. Now the PCM counts the number of times the signal voltage reaches the 0.8 and the 0.2 volt thresholds. Now 0.8 is full rich, 0.2 is full lean. Now this is a big improvement over older scan tool readings like the GM cross counts everybody's familiar with. There the PCM counted every crossing of the 0.45 volt threshold. This is a big improvement over that. Now low counts here may indicate the signal is biased and does not cross both thresholds. A rich bias it might only cross the 8 tenths threshold and never the 2 tenths. A lean bias it may cross the 2 tenths and never cross the 8 tenths. Poor fuel control whether it's stuck either rich or lean will also count, cause the counts to be low. So the bottom line is we're going to have to look at this data and make some decision. Now as we looked at some number of vehicles on JTEC we found that a .6, uh, 61 is a typical value we saw and a minimum spec is 45. You will see these change between different vehicles so pay attention let this tell you the specs and follow it and when you get low counts we're going to need to study the signal of DSO to know the cause of low counts. Next we're going to study some scope patterns on a DSO to see what we can learn in that method. Now you see it's moving live here so you can get a feel for what it's doing. We don't know of any other way to make the half cycle measurement other than with a scope pattern like we're looking at here. And we're going to take you beyond some basic testing to show you some things we look at doing snap accelerate. The reason we're doing these extra things is it helps us spot conditions that influence the counts we're going to be seeing in mode 6. Remember just seeing the mode 6 counts doesn't clearly identify the problem. We can tell you what the PCM is measuring but you also need to understand things that influence that measurement. Now here are the voltages that Chrysler uses. The first one is 0.8 at the top. We put a line there for you and if you notice down at the bottom we've added one for 0.2. Now Chrysler does a measurement where they time count the number of times the signal reaches 0.8 and 0.2 and they call that the half cycle counts. This is a big improvement over things like the old cross counts we used to see in the old days in scan data. Now the other thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to be doing some snap acceleration. The snap acceleration will help us measure response time and the max and min voltages and we're going to show you why they're important and the influence they have. Look at this response time here. It's really good. The red line shows you how quickly it goes up. We're also going to measure the max and min voltage because that tells us what the oxygen sensor is doing. When we go full rich this sensor goes slightly over 1 volt. When we go full lean it goes down to 0.1 volt. It could go to 0 0.20 volts in some cases. Now what this tells us, the max and min voltage gives us some clues about this sensor's ability to switch between half cycles. This particular sensor finds it easier to go high than it does to go low. Now that's a big finding. What does that tell us? Well we have to consider everything. This sensor switches fast enough but it may be cooler than normal. And how would we know it's cooler than normal? Well we know about JTEC. JTEC systems have higher O2 sensor voltage when their sensor is cold. So we use all of this information in order to put together a complete picture of what we're looking at. So if we have a lower than expected counts in mode 6 for half cycle it may be because the sensor is either biased too high and doesn't cross two tenths frequently enough or it's biased low and doesn't cross eight tenths fast enough. This is what we mean by saying take a look at the total system. 